Awesome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Raising All Voices, our events that we're having every Wednesday this month in March with the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning. We will be starting in just a couple of minutes, so hang tight, and we'll be right there with you. Okay. And we should, maybe we'll just wait a couple of extra minutes for everybody to just kind of log in and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. I am excited. Are you all excited today? I am. Yes, yes. <laughs> we are excited. Okay, um, and one other thing, let me just go ahead and take a look. All right. We're gonna go ahead and, and get started, everybody. Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up today um, to be able to help us navigate through our personal and professional mindfulness. We are gonna be um, talking about that in just a few minutes with our guest speaker, Christiane. Um, in the meantime, I would love for Dr. Brahme to go ahead and start us off by talking a little bit about what we did on Monday, March 8th. So for those of you who came to our um, International Women's Day special event, Raising All Voices for Equity and Justice. Um, I would love to introduce Dr. Brahme for her to talk a little bit about how that event went. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and it is with great pleasure that I, I can report a little bit about um, our Monday launch event, Raising All Voices for Equity and Justice. It was really um, a successful, fantastic, and very fun and engaging event. Um, some of our amazing speakers, we had our keynote, of course, uh, Reverend Dr. Helen Easterling Williams, who gave a very, um, a very moving introduction, a welcome by Dr. Farzeen Majidi um, and our wonderful uh, moderator, Kim Kerr. Can you uh, go to the next slide so that I can, um, I wanna make sure and I get the, yeah. So our panelists, I do wanna read off the names because they were amazing. And if I didn't, um, well, Jatan Bosby, Dr. Gabby Miramontes, our very own, Janet Pope, Colleen Rockefort, Char Charlotte Westerhouse Renfrow, and again, Kim Kerr, our amazing moderator. There was so many takeaways from this. Um, that it was really, um, it could be interpreted in so many ways, but it was also a very personal experience. And some of the things that I took away from this is that raising your voice is very personal and it's also very contextual and situational. So that um, I felt walking away from this that wherever you are and whatever your voice is, you can find a way to raise your voice and speak the truth uh, within your environment. We also addressed um, issues of mentorship and uh, to, and we were all encouraged to look around for people to mentor and also to appreciate our, men mentor men our mentors who sometimes don't look like we expect them to. They don't look necessarily like us. They may not be women, they may be men, they may be in very different kinds of positions and um, and, light, and have had very different life experiences, but we can learn so much from all of that. Um, so it was, um, uh, as I mentioned, very well attended. There were, we were just shy of a hundred attendees and um, the chat and the questions uh, were, came fast and furious. We had a wonderful conversation and could have kept going for probably another hour easily. So, Thanks for uh, letting me talk a little bit about this, um, about this launch event. I enjoyed it so much and, and felt so proud of our group. Thank you so much, Dr. Brahme. It, it was a really great event. I enjoyed it and I know we all got some really great nuggets out of it. Um, and so for any of you who have missed it, we are working on getting a recording for March 8 up and we will let you know soon once that is um, available. Uh, we do have other upcoming sessions coming up in the next following Wednesday. So aside from what we're doing today, um, which is navigating our personal and professional mindfulness, we are also talking about the rise of agency, activism, and womanism uh, coming up next Wednesday, March 17th, same time, same place, 5 o'clock to 6.15 p.m. 
um, with our speaker, Dr. Felicia LeBoy, and our host will be our very own Charletta Green, who is our uh, PhD global student, global leadership and change um, student here at Pepperdine. Um, and then on March 24, we will have strategic relationship building. This is going to be with our speaker, uh, in Dr. Inga Carboni, with our host, our very own uh, Dana Carmouche. And finally, on March 31st, Wednesday, March 31st, again at five o'clock, we will be having speaker Courtney White, who is the global head of HR for BASF, speak with our host, Rob Reyes, who's also one of our ADD students here at GSAP. So we are definitely looking forward to hosting all these upcoming sessions this in this in this in during this month, I'm sorry, during this month. All right. Um, I would love Dr. Gabby to go ahead and talk to us a little bit more about the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning. So Dr. Gabby, take it away. So I wanna thank everyone for being here um, as we're putting on these events, elevating voices of all of our students, our partners, um, our alum and our staff. Um, the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning um, is has, housed out of the um, education department, the Office of the Dean, uh, Associate Dean of Education. Basically what we're doing is we're trying to provide added value to the work that's coming out of Pepperdine through scholarship, um, through enhanced opportunities to guest speakers and our panels and just giving our students um, avenues for elevating their voices. And I know I keep saying the word elevating, but I, I can't emphasize that enough. It's not enough to just have a seat at the table. We have to elevate people's voices. We have to make sure that we're all heard and what better way through scholarship and, and these events. So, um, some of the things that we do here at the center, obviously these events, we also um, support our students through publications, both through our internal journal, which is a scholarship to the borders journal, but also helping our students um, generate their own scholarship that they could then take out and present and publish elsewhere. Um, we have certificate programs and um, Asia towards the end will speak to some of them, but we have certificate programs to enhance the learning opportunities. Um, we have other activities and roundtables, and we have office hours, again, to make sure that our students and our alum and our stakeholders have access, not just to the classroom environment, but also to the greater community. So that really is the intent of the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning. We're growing, we're evolving. Um, so I, I um, invite you all to continue on this journey with us and see where this takes us. Thank you so much, Dr. Gabby, for telling us more about the Center for Global Partnerships and Learning. And of course, if you want to get to know more about it and see how you can get involved, um, please don't hesitate to email um, Dr. Gabby um, and hopefully she'll go ahead and put her email in the chat. Um, we'll go ahead and, and enter that information, but don't hesitate to email her or email um, any one of us in the group and we'll go ahead and answer your questions. Um, with that said, I would love to go ahead and get us going on our session today, navigating our professional and personal life with mindfulness. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Asia, Asia Ghazi, and I am the host today for our session. And I am really happy and honored to be a host and to be able to host alongside Christiane Avidian, who is our speaker today. Um, Christiane is the Chief Relationship Officer and GTM lead at Cape Gemini's Accelerated Solutions Environment. And she has been with Cape Gemini for 20 years, focused on design thinking and strategic alliances and partnership. She holds a Master's of Business Administration from University of California, Irvine, a Bachelor's of Arts degree with honors in business from Point Loma University, and a certified, she is a certified mindfulness facilitator and instructor. Christiane is committed to positive leadership and has diversity and inclusion in her DNA, driving efforts focused primarily on LGBT, gender and mindfulness, mental health. She is currently the executive sponsor for Outfront at Cape Gemini. Her Gallup Strengths Finder top five themes included, include strategic, connectedness, competition, ideation, and futuristic. Ooh, that's awesome. I should I should probably share my strengths finder with you one of these days, right? <laughs> All right, gosh. Okay, so Christiane is, is a certified mindfulness facilitator and the instructor through Mindful Leader 
and has taken advanced leadership training with Search Inside Yourself and Potential Project. That's awesome. Christiane is our Cape Gemini Chief Mindfulness Architect and has developed a mindfulness with Cape Gemini Facilitation Certification. Christiane currently holds board positions for Lesbians Who Tech and High Tech and lives in Los Angeles with her wife, Hillary, and their dog, Lily. We are so happy to have you here today, Christiane, and I would love for you to go ahead and just take us away. Thank you. Thanks, Asia, for the great welcome. I'm super excited to be here with you all this evening. Um, Pepperdine has always been, I have a have good, good, uh, I hold a very uh, warm place in my heart for Pepperdine. Growing up in the Southern California area, um, knowing well about the school, I did go to a little bit of a rival school, Point Loma, for my undergrad, and it was always the joke of who had the better landscape, Point Loma in San Diego or you guys in Malibu. So it's it's a coin toss, um, but I'm, I'm really proud and excited to be here and um, feel fortunate that um, my connection with Kim Kerr at Time at Cap Gemini has reconnected me here. So excited to be here. Um, yeah, I just am excited for us to have a interactive conversation today. So I would say, um, let's let's explore, let's be curious, let's dig in and feel free to, uh, to interact. So if we could go to the next slide. So the flow of what I wanna cover today um, or an agenda of sorts, um, Asia did the welcome. I'd like to just go through what I'd like to cover in terms of objectives in our time together. Uh, an agreement that I'd like to suggest that we operate by for our next hour or so together. Um, a little bit of an introduction around what is mindfulness and even unpacking the, con the topic to some degree. Um, it's, you know, we'll get there, but it's not necessarily sitting on cushions for hours on end. I'd really like to have a conversation with all of us about what mindfulness is to us. Um, and what the values or benefits of being mindful are. Um, and then given that it's International Women's Month and happy International Women's Day, Inter International Women's Month to all of, all of us, all of the feminine that shows up in each of us uh, on this call. Um, so talk about women in the practices and contemplative practices um, and then lead us through a guided meditation and then we'll clo close with some Q&A. Next slide. Uh, so you did you did a, a great overview. I guess just to just to add on that, um, my day job is um, leading the uh, as you mentioned, owning relationships and go to market for a part of the Cap Gemini business. My passion project, I'll call it, has been in the area of mindfulness. And I feel super fortunate that I've been able to grow and build this practice within our organization, which is 270,000 people. Um, and it really started uh, organically. Um, my mindfulness, my mindfulness practice, uh, truthfully, came probably from my upbringing in a Christian tradition of being in the church and prayer. But I didn't know that it was then, then. I didn't know that's what it was. And so leading, fast forwarding, doing things like yoga, being on the mat and being in tune with my breath and attention is what really, really made me aware of what mindfulness is. And then I started exploring bringing mindfulness into organizations. And that's where I have found my interest and sweet spot and passion at the intersection of mindfulness and all things diversity and inclusion. Um, and so excited to be celebrating IWD with you. Next slide. So the objectives of really what I wanna cover, this framework is something we use in our organization um, when we are doing training. So when we're, we're training our folks um, and our employees on any topic, we try to use this framework that we call the five E's. And so the five E's, if you start at the foundation of explaining what something is and then starting to exemplify what that something is, and then you can see moving into exploring and you see how that wedge gets a little bit tips. It tips into really the expectations and experiences. So for the next hour or so, I'd like to play with these five E's um, and explain what mindfulness is and is not, 
exemplify some examples, explore how we might use mindfulness in our daily lives, and then dip our toe in the mindfulness waters with our expectations and experiences. Next slide. So the agreement I'd like to offer um, is that, does anybody know, let's use the chat, how many hours does it take to be considered a master of any subject? Two hundred hours, four hundred hours, ten thousand. Jessica's right. Ten thousand hours to be considered a master of anything. That is a lot of hours. So I'm not talking about mindfulness mastery. Uh, I certainly don't have that. Um, but it's really a practice. And so, given that it is a practice, I'd like to encourage us that this is a safe, brave space that we're going to learn, that we're going to experience, and that we come with a beginner's mind. Um, being present and just operating from a place of kindness, curiosity, and compassion. And most importantly, to bring ourselves into that compassion circle. Uh, the theme of what we're going to talk about today is self-compassion and something I'll call fierce self-compassion. Um, I, I, we talked earlier about the idea of raising your voice. I think, Maria, you mentioned this, raising your voice and speaking your truth. Um, and what I heard in my head was speaking truth to power and how we as, as females use fierce self-compassion to elevate and raise our voice. So you can be on camera or off camera. I'd, I'd love, it's a small enough group. It's awesome for us to have some interaction on camera later, but uh, when we do the guided meditations, certainly take care of yourself and go off camera if you need to. Next slide. So what is mindfulness? Um, and we're gonna we're gonna explore this a little bit more in a in a minute. But really, when it boils down to it, it's just the art of being present in this very moment. The quality or state of being conscious and human ability to full, be fully present and aware. Um, Viktor Frankl has a, an amazing quote that talks about there's a stimulus between action and response, and the ability. In that split second, that split stimulus to shift our reaction of whether we get angry or whether we take a breath and react in a more positive way um, of what we really want to have happen in that experience. Um, and really that's all mindfulness is. Right now on this group of 17 or so of us, this is a really unique experience of us coming together. So being present in this very unique moment is something special. Next slide. So I, I spoke to this earlier um, and my own personal story around mindful, mindfulness does really start with contemplative prayer. And this isn't something I often get to talk to at work. So I'm, I'm actually excited to have this conversation and dig in. Uh, when I talk about it at work, it's, it's in a very secular um, position to not uh, cause any problems. But uh, the truth is for me, mindfulness did start in, a, in, in prayer. And if, you know, there's some great authors here, you're probably familiar with some of them, but Thomas Merton, Merton and Richard Rohr are the heroes that I look to around the topic of contemplative prayer and contemplation and being silent and just kind of going inward and listening to the voice inside, the voice in my heart, the voice that's really guiding me and already knows the answer uh, where I can, when I can get out of my head. And so just wanted to raise awareness to some of these authors. Um, and I also, I couldn't not put some great female authors up here as well. So Barbara Brown Taylor just finished reading her book, An Altar in the World. It's an amazing book. And um, Rachel Held Evans on the right-hand side, if you're familiar with her, she is uh, the reason I am back in a church whatsoever and definitely miss her soul on this earth. So. She's been a, a big inspiration for me. And feel free, as, we're, as I'm talking, if you guys have other authors you'd like to suggest, let's add them to the chat. We'd love to see. Next slide. 
So using the chat, I'd love to hear from folks, what are some examples of contemplative practices or mindfulness that you might use in your everyday life? You may not call them this, but if you consider times or moments when you try to go inward, you try to create quiet, what does that look like? Morning quiet time, meditation, mindful eating. Jessica, you're a rock star. That's the one I have still not mastered. Any others? Quiet listening when you wake up. Journal reflections, absolutely. And that's something that doesn't always get, uh, yeah, gardening, absolutely. Another perfect example of being mindful, being present, listening to breathing, daily word reading, morning walks, midday, midday moments to stare into nature, reading books, great stuff. Um, I have a, a, a great image here of tree of contemplative practices and uh, mindfulness. Uh, so things like music and singing, contemplative arts, journaling, improv, deep listening, storytelling, labyrinth walking, yoga, dance, meditation, silence, centering, all kinds of things. Laughing at cats, love it. Um, so the truth is there is an entire, there's, there's multiple things in our mindfulness toolkit that we can, we can dig into. Um, it's not just meditation. It's not just sitting on a cushion. Um, so just that awareness that there's many things out there for us. All right, next slide. So this is a slide I use at, at work. Um, when I talk about what are the values of mindfulness, what are the things that drive the benefits of, of using those moments of mindfulness? It develops better leaders who are more emotionally intelligent, empathetic, and inclusive. And we know uh, it's, it's important to have good leaders to have these skills. Our performance increases. We increase our human to human interaction and ability to sustain focus and at task. We know we have so many devices going off all the time, our phone, our email, our text. The ability to actually hone in and be focused on anything feels like a luxury. So trying to tap into that. The third pillar is innovation or creativity, you can call it. So growing our ability to come from a beginner's mindset, which drives fresh ideas, new ways of thinking, and curiosity bringing, breeding creativity. This, this very much speaks to the work that I do um, in, my, in my day job of really helping organizations brainstorm, think through new ideas, and solve business problems. And coming at it from that fresh beginner's eye is really important. Decision-making, taking a wider perspective and responding with clarity under pressure and well-being, enabling people to better manage stress, be less reactive and be more present. Any questions on, on this slide or thoughts that folks wanna add? All right, next slide. And so the overall case for mindfulness, um, you know, mindfulness can be considered a, a soft skill, something hard to measure, something hard to have an ROI on. And when you're talking to organizations, they like to get, they like to get the ROI. Um, but the truth is lots of research has been done that demonstrates the value both to the human individual as well as the organization when mindfulness does occur. So from a human benefit perspective, it creates a calm, calming space. It creates a focused mindset, the increased well-being from a physical and mental perspective, increases our emotional intelligence, and increases the learning and innovation. And you can see here the statistics around organizational benefits. Uh, I won't read through them, but 
the truth is there is there is this evidence there is true neuroscience behind um, the practice that's continuing to evolve to support the case next slide so let's talk about women in mindfulness and contemplation which is i'm excited to have this conversation uh, with us tonight so there's four, I'll call them superheroes or superheroines in mindfulness that I have a ton of respect for. Um, coming from the bottom right hand side, does anybody know who that is? Kristen Neff is her name. Uh, she is a professor at University of Texas. She is well known as being um, kind of the leading researcher around the topic of self-compassion and has written books. Um, she's super curious around the idea of the gender parity between self-compassion and that men typically uh, consider self-compassion that soft thing that's too vulnerable that doesn't demonstrate power and by nature women have more self-compassion um, and so she speaks to kind of the yin and the yang of having that soft tender side as well as having that fierceness and brave or brave being brave around self-compassion and she defines self-compassion in three areas the first being self-kindness how we bring ourselves again into that kindness circle secondly having common humanity knowing that we're not alone um, and third having mindfulness um, so she's, she's an amazing force of nature. The woman on the top right, Rhonda McGee, is a lawyer. Um, she's also a professor at University of San Francisco. And her passion is at the intersection of mindfulness and the law, which is kind of an interesting topic, not one that is normally comes to mind. Um, but what she speaks to is that people come to lawyers when they are in crisis, when they are in trauma, when they are really needing help. And she is focused on a contemplative legal approach, which is fascinating. Um, I'm in the middle of a two year plus <laughs> legal issue over a contractor issue at my mom's house. And I wish I could definitely deal with some help in that in that nature it's not if you any of you have had legal issues it's not a fun it's not a fun road to go um, so she has an amazing way of integrating uh, mindfulness in the law and um, i'd like to actually read a quote from her um, which is as a woman of color in a society and world that wasn't necessarily created for a person like me to thrive she talks about surplus suffering that comes with the way our different identities and our embodiments of the world are met with preconceptions and stereotypes and the opportunity she has she has to meet that suffering with mindfulness um, so she's another great inspiration top left is sharon salzberg um, she's very well known for her loving kindness focus in mindfulness and we're going to be doing a guided meditation on loving kindness kindful kindness um, she's also also the author of many books um, had a a traumatic childhood which um, the loving kindness work has really helped her heal from and the bottom left is a woman named Janice Martirano. And Janice was a high powered executive at General Mills. Um, she had burnout. She had been working on a high profile acquisition that was supposed to take six months, end up taking 18 months, during which time she lost both her parents and just crashed. And as a result of that, um, was exploring healing ways to take care of her grief and and recover. Um, she then founded the Institute for Mindful Leadership and um, really believes that it's organization's responsibility to build mindfulness for their people and what she calls it a win, win, win. So a win for the people, the win for the organization and a win for society. So four amazing women, there's lots more, um, but I just wanted to highlight them to you, them to you all. All right, let's 
let's dig in. Are you guys ready, ready to play? Okay, so for this part, again, I encourage you to be comfortable. You can stay on camera or you can go off camera. Most importantly, I want you to take care of yourself. How are we doing on time, Asia? Um, we, we're, we're doing good. We've got plenty of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think we might do a good 10 to 12 minute guided meditation if you guys are all up for it. So um, get comfortable. You can either be in a seated position or if you prefer, you are feel you're able to lay down, whatever's um, comfortable for you. You just wanna be able to be both alert um, as well as comfortable. And I'll be guiding you through this practice. My guidance is just an invitation. I want you to make sure that you're comfortable and if at any point you feel uncomfortable, take care of yourself and whatever you need to do to take care of your body and your mind. I encourage you and invite you to close your eyes. If you're seated, feeling the floor solid underneath your feet. And let's just be here for a few breaths. As you notice the rise of the breath and the fall of the breath. This will be an active practice in which you recognize and invite feelings of kindness and compassion towards yourself and others. And we will be experiencing what unfolds as we do this practice. So just allowing yourself to rest for the moment in stillness, beginning by noticing the body here as it is, the breath as it is, and for a few seconds, just focus on your breath, being curious about your breath in and your breath out. Let yourself experience and be aware of the sensation of what it's like to simply be here. Now, simply breathing. Nowhere to go, nothing else to do, but be here. bringing attention to a place in your body where you feel kindness and connection. For some people, it's the belly, some it's the hands, or it may be at the physical area of your chest and the heart. Allow your awareness to rest there, noticing what arises. Feel free to place a hand on whatever area, area of your body is generating that kindness and connection. Feel your breath coming in and out. Shifting and bringing to mind someone who really loves and really who cares about you, someone who makes you smile makes you feel safe and loved. It can be a partner, a spouse, a friend, a family member, a child or pet, someone who loves you and with whom you are 100% at ease. If it's challenging to think of someone, perhaps imagine what it might feel like to be cared for and loved deeply, knowing that you are deserving. feeling the warmth of your hand and the beating of your heart as you generate kindness and compassion and keeping that person in mind, inviting feelings of goodwill toward that, towards that person. Using these phrases, if they resonate for you and saying silently to yourself, may you be safe May you be healthy and strong. 
May you live with ease. And may you be kind to yourself. Again, saying silently to yourself, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. Just noticing the breath in and out, feeling that compassion and kindness radiate from you. Now shifting your attention away from this person and offering your love and kindness and compassion to yourself. Remembering that you are always deserving of love, even when you're suffering or in fear. Now inviting goodwill towards yourself, silently saying to yourself, may I be safe. May I be healthy and strong. May I live with ease. May I be kind to myself. Knowing that you are deserving of love, of kindness, of compassion and inviting that fierce compassion, fierce self-compassion and kindness towards yourself. May I be safe. May I be healthy and strong. May I live with ease May I be kind to myself. Now bring to mind someone who's neutral in your life someone you might see throughout the course of the day or the week, someone that you don't have a strong positive or negative emotion to, but knowing that person, even though you may not know them well, is deserving of goodwill, kindness, and love. Notice your heart center now. Does it feel differently? Do you feel more warmth, openness, or tenderness? Continue to visualize this person as you breathe and saying silently to yourself, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease.
May you be kind to yourself. And again, with that person in mind, saying silently to yourself, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. And now shifting your awareness to those of us on the call here today, knowing that as we said earlier, this is a unique experience for this group of individuals to come together. Similarly to snowflakes and no two snowflakes are the same. This moment in time is a special and unique one for this group. Whether you recognize folks on the call or not, consider individuals on this call and silently say to yourself, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. Knowing our humanness, again, saying silently to yourself, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. And now let's expand that invitation of kindness to include a broader field, family, friends, neighbors, people who you care about, who are participants in your life every day or in some other way. Saying to yourself silently, may you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. Humans just like you, wanting to feel safe, loved, just like you. May you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. Lastly, let's expand awareness to people we don't know. People in our neighborhood, our city, across the country, across borders and oceans, and across the globe to all people everywhere and knowledge, acknowledging our common human, humanity. We all want to be safe, happy, healthy, and loved. May you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. 
May you be kind to yourself. May you be safe. May you be healthy and strong. May you live with ease. May you be kind to yourself. We'll take a few breaths just in stillness and silence, noticing your heart, noticing your breath. And as we come to the close of this practice, I appreciate that you've taken the time to be here, to show gratitude for others, to show self-compassion for yourself. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes, coming back to our virtual room, doing whatever you need to do to take care of yourself, to stretch, and come back in the room. So we wanted just to open it up and there, I have a few questions that we can walk through on the next slide or feel free to come on camera and say what that was like for you. Um, I want to start really quickly. Um, I don't know about those of you, like this is something for me, I want to be more into is mindfulness and being able to spend some time meditating. And I found myself fidgeting a lot and just like, I mean, I was listening and I'm there, but yet at the same time I'm fidgeting and I'm just trying to like shift myself. So for someone like me, like what do I do so that I'm really like able to concentrate and be mindful and I'm not thinking about a million different things going on. Yeah, so you're human. It's, that's <laughs> completely normal. It happens for all of us. And I think it's the fact that you know that that's happening, you're already, you're already heading there. Um, the idea is, the idea of mindfulness is not to completely have a blank mind, right? But it is to notice the breath. And so when the mind wanders, you bring it back and it's going to wander again and you bring it back and you wanders again, you bring your back, you bring it back. This was a little bit long too. So I would say there's shorter, you can start with some baby steps. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody else wants to participate and ask questions, please feel free to do it. You can do it in the chat or you can open up just like I did and ask the question. Christian, certainly not a question, but just a, a declaration. This is easier today than it was the first time we went there. So it really felt like a midday power nap. It was recharging. Um, and of course the quick switching, my mind would go and my body would just say, okay, find another position to be comfortable mm -hmm. and then get back at it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing, Kim. I just saw something about a finger labyrinth. Um, yeah, Charlotte, can, can you talk about that? Yeah. yeah, hang on for a second. I'll even get it so I can show it to you. Okay, so, let I like in. this. Maybe while we're waiting for Charletta, Rob, I saw your question. So how does practicing, Charlotte, are you back? I'm back. Okay. Hi. Hello. So this is a finger labyrinth. 
And this is what I use when I do work with the upper room with the United Methodist Church and we're doing, um, you know, when you can't walk the labyrinth or when we're writing um, medication for folks. And this really does help kind of center your mind because your, your, your finger is doing something. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you get to, you kind of get to follow the labyrinth so that your mind focuses um, and it's helpful when your mind wanders. I love that. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you. And another idea is, you know, having this time is awesome, but you don't always have this time. You're in class, you're at a meeting. So there's these, there's micro practices that you can do, even rubbing these two fingers together. If you're sitting in a meeting, nobody's going to see you doing this, right? Or really feeling your feet on the ground or really feeling the chair supporting your body and just taking a breath in and out. So that I, I like this one a lot. If I feel my heart or my head start to race in a meeting and I come back to this, it helps to ground me. How does that work? May I ask? Uh, I've never heard of that before. It's just the idea that, so what I tell myself is to try to really feel the ridges on my finger. Okay. okay. Really, really okay. pay attention to the ridges mm -hmm. that, and that yeah. feeling that happens between these two fingers. Yeah. And nobody in the room needs to know I'm doing that, right? Yeah, that's so cool. I've never heard of that. The great thing about this tool is you don't need to buy expensive shoes. You can buy your lab <laughs> finger labyrinth thing, and that's awesome. But you don't need to buy expensive things to, to have this tool. It's really your breath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. There's a question here about how does practicing mindfulness lead to a higher orientation towards equity and inclusion? Um, it's a really great question. And for me, it is, it comes back to that quote by Viktor Frankl of the stimulus between action and response. Um, you know, in a time, so let's talk, let's talk uh, about the last year. We women have take, taken the brunt of um, the homework, the, the, the care at home. We've had to take care of kids. We've had to manage school for kids. We've had to manage the housework. And what does that mean of how we show up at school or work? It's, it's a harder toll for women. And um, so giving women the ability or any uh, underrepresented minority in a situation where there is some lack of equity or a lack of parity allows us to really tune into the clarity of what's happening for us. And I'm gonna say it again, raise your voice, speak your truth, speak truth to power of whatever it is that you're feeling in a healthy and productive way. Does that make sense? I think it was Rob that you asked that. Hey, if I could just add on to that, I think the early practice of namaste, <laughs> like really getting clear that I'm not alone in this thing <laughs> called yep. divine in me, right? Yeah. Um, it just levels the ground. Yeah. Um, I think on the note of carrying a different load too, this year has just proven um, a great opportunity to be honest about what I can't do. Like, I don't have space for this and I just need to say not now, maybe later. Um, that, and honor, that, that's honor okay, right? <laughs> In essence, creating boundaries, right? Say, yeah. Learning to say no to what we know we need to say no to and saying yes to what we know we can handle, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I thought that was great advice too. The finger thing, I was trying to do it. I know Mona just said that was great advice and I'm like, I'm trying to do it. Let me feel the ridges. And then it's you like- can, oh. You can do this and you can also uh, like one hand on another hand. Right. Really, yeah. really feel those ridges. And it's another like- yeah, it's a definitely a new sensation to feel the yep. ridges. We're, yeah, we're when do we do that? 
<laughs> Another good micro practice is you can look at, uh, so I'm in, we have a very, so I'm, I'm in uh, Highland Park, by the way. So but east side LA, um, we have a very small house here. And so I'm in the second bedroom, office, junk room, everything. It's a mess. But there is a light fixture hanging from the ceiling that I can look at. And I try to look at it first at a, from a focus, like really look at it. And then I start to have a soft focus on it. And that is another good micro practice to activate if you're in a room. Again, as a way to just come back to you, as a way to not get caught up in your head or in activity and really just come back to, okay, what, what am I here to do? What am I here to serve? What is required of me at this time? I have a question about um, guided meditation specifically, because I found this, for me, this was actually just so wonderful. I felt so taken care of. Um, and I do try to meditate, you know, as often as I, as many days a week as, you know, many days a week. Yep. Um, um, but with this, and then I have just a timer or a little sound thing. But this was really a different experience with the, you know, with being guided. Uh, are there resources for that that you might recommend? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think probably on the next slide is there's there's some great apps out there. Um, okay. You probably heard of Headspace, Insight Timer, and Calm. Um, and I think Headspace was actually offering to LA residents a free year, at least in the beginning of COVID. I don't mm -hmm. know if they're still doing that. Um, there's also just Insight Timer is a free app mm -hmm. that you can use. To your point, sometimes I like guided meditations and sometimes I like quiet. It mm -hmm. kind of depends what space I'm in of mm -hmm. wanting to be guided or wanting to try to just sit and be. That's helpful. Thank you. All right. As I'm conscious of time, so I want to kick it back to you, I think. Uh, on, I think on the next slide, it just talks about, yeah, the resources of there's some apps there. Feel free to find me on LinkedIn or shoot me an email. I'm, I love having conversations on this topic. So feel free to reach out. And thank you again for letting me join you today. Well, it was so great having you. Um, and if anybody has any other last minute questions, um, we, we could be able to entertain questions. It can be on mindfulness. Um, it could even be on our um, Center of Global Partnerships, which we'll talk about briefly. Um, but if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Um, you can either ask in the chat box and we'll see them or we'll go ahead and you can go ahead and open up your video or you don't have to be on video, but if you have a question, go ahead and, and, and ask so we can go ahead and answer them for you. And so as you are all thinking about your questions, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce um, what's gonna happen for the next uh, Wednesday event that we're having. Um, and so our next week, Wednesday event, March 17, again, from 5 p.m. to 6.15 p.m. Um, Pacific, eight o'clock Eastern, we're having the rise of agency, activism, and if I can just move my, my Zoom thing here, <laughs> the rise of agency, activism, and womanism. Our host is our very own Charletta Green. She is um, one of our uh, GSET PhD Global Leadership and Change students, and we are so honored to have her as a host. She will be hosting our speaker, Fel Dr. Felicia Leboy, who is a former Associate Dean of Black Church Studies um, from Louisville Seminary. So this is gonna be another interactive uh, session featuring um, these amazing speakers, featuring Charletta and, and Dr. Felicia um, to increase your awareness of evolution from feminism to womanism and the rise of agency and activism. Um, and so with that said, um, I think, um, let's see. I, uh, can I draw attention to one interesting question in the, in the chat? Um, really? Having to do with the meditation. Yeah, uh, this is a really, it's a really good question, about, Patty. Both yeah, have been adversarial. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And the truth is, 
that question is, it was actually in the guided meditation that I, I did tonight. I took it out because yeah. okay, this is the first time, like it, that's a little bit of a more advanced topic, right? And you have to be in a space where you feel very safe to go there. And um, I, yeah, I, I didn't, first time meeting you, I didn't really feel like I wanted to take you there. Um, it's a, it is a good question. And I think it's a, it's a hard question that we each have to wrestle with. Um, and there are ways that you can do it. Uh, the way that I do that is I start with low level, <laughs> low level offenders first, right? Like the person who took my parking spot or the person who, you know, cut in front of me in line, low level offenders first. I would say, don't go to trauma first. This is lifetime work that you have to do to, to get there. So hope, hope that answers the question, but also feel free to reach out and I'm happy to talk through that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for asking the question. Mm -hmm. Brave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If any, do, and does, do you all have any more questions? Again, we have some time to go ahead and, and make a discussion out of it. Um, I think for me, maybe a question is how much should one practice mindfulness, I guess, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis to help be able to, I guess, practice that mindfulness aspect, because that's something I know I struggle a lot with. Yeah, I, I think start small is really what I say. Um, we all have these great goals that, I mean, I have this great goal that I'm going to get up every day and sit for 20 minutes. And I, I don't do that. So I've committed to what I call daily-ish practices, which makes me more self-compassionate to myself if I skip a day or miss a day, right? Um, and a daily-ish practice could be washing the dishes with intent or taking the trash out mindfully. Um, so John Kabat-Zinn is one of the leading mindfulness leaders um, and teaches a program called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, he says, put pillows out or some mm -hmm. kind of indicator throughout your house. And even when you're passing it, even if you sit for a minute, it brings you into a practice. Um, but I would say start small, Yeah. a minute, three minutes a day. When you're in the car and waiting for something, uh, not where you're driving, obviously. Although, although the goal is actually to get to a place where your eyes are open. At, you know the, I don't know the verse in Thessalonians: "Pray without ceasing." It's the same idea. Yeah, yeah. I love that you said daily-ish because it kind of takes away that oh, you, this is something to do daily. This is something Absolutely. that you can do really any time. Yeah, and I also wanted to mention that the fact that you said to be kind to yourself and to be compassionate to yourself, that's a really great reminder because many times we're not passionate, I'm sorry, compassionate with ourselves and we're not kind to ourselves because we've got so much that's going on that we're thinking, okay, well, you know, what can we do to do that? And so it's a great reminder for all of us that are here listening that we really do need to be kind to ourselves and uh, be okay if something doesn't happen the way we want it to be or how it can be. And I just want to thank you for saying that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, so one thing um, also, um, Ida will go ahead and put up our survey. So we, we would love for all of you who are here today listening in to please go ahead and take a survey, just letting us know and giving us feedback on how you, we, you know, what you thought about the event today and whether or, you know, how, what, you know, whatever feedback you have for us, because we would love to hear from you. Um, go ahead and copy and paste the link that Ida just posted in the chat box and put it, uh, you know, copy and paste the link into your browser and we'll go ahead and and you know you know hope, you know do your survey and then hopefully we'll get that data information that'll help us out for the next events we're going to be doing next year for hopefully IWD again um and then um Charlotta said R Roberta Bondi author to love as God loves uses knitting as mindfulness activity which engages hands heart and mind love that yeah it's really good isn't it yeah 
Yeah. Well, I would and- love to join you in person someday when the world comes back to normal or ish. Uh, join you in person for a session. It will be great to have you come back for a session. I think in person is great. I feel like most of us are Zoom fatigued. At this point. <laughs> so mindfulness is probably going to be a huge deal for us once we're out of the Zoom aspect and back into the in-person yeah. aspect of this, right? Yeah. Yeah. I will say though, that this has been my favorite Zoom session in a long time. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Yay. The one without thinking, no thinking. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Just breathe so, it. So can, can, help us to remember to connect you with um, Yaz, who manages career services and the annual retreat for students looking to find their path. Will do. Jan, I have a question. Do you use any of the desert mothers and fathers kind of mantras or prayers in your mindfulness? I don't know this, but I'm going to ah, write it yeah. down. <laughs> well, Roberta Bondi, who was one of my professors in seminary, is the one that kind of helped us with that using daily compline um, oh, uh-huh. as, as a means of kind of, and she was always clear about your mind's not going to stop racing always, but Here's how, you know, this is what I've learned to focus on here. Are the So she used uh, the, what she researched, which was desert mothers and fathers sayings and prayers um, as a means of kind of mantra and focus and, you know, that whole idea of praying without ceasing uh-huh. <laughs> um, to, to be mindful about the surroundings, but also to be gracious to self and to others. Yeah. Thank you. I like that. I'll, I'm going to have to look it up. The thing that's so fascinating around the t- this topic is it comes from such different indigenous places, right? From the Christianity perspective, for me, it comes from prayer. From the Buddhist it, nature, it comes from, you know, someplace else. And it's really cool to explore how this came to be and to look at the similarities, I guess, across of that, that lineage and history. Thanks for sharing, Charletta. Oh. All right, so thank you so much for those of you taking a survey. I'm gonna share our link tree uh, link right now for those, for those of you who are looking to register. Give me one second here, it's just typing it up is like, because it, it got covered here. But I would love for all of you to go ahead and, and click on Linktree and, and register for the Rise of Agency, Activism and Womanism coming up next Wednesday with, Char- with Dr. Felicia Lavoie and Charlotta Green. Um, and also our other upcoming Wednesday events that are coming up on the, I believe the 20, the 17th, the 24th, the 31st. So we'd love to see you there. Um, and so, it, it, you know, in honor of our time, I would like for us to kind of spend a, like a few minutes just talking to um, Kim here. Kim is going to talk to us about um, our brand new certificate program we've, we're coming out with that we're actually we've come out with already. So go ahead and Kim, tell us a little bit more about our, the RQ certification. Sure. Thank you so much. So I just dropped in a deeper link to follow on to KA's link from the Berkeley Greater Good Uh, about trauma uh, as a follow-up to Patty's question. But with regard to RQ, we've all heard about EQ, so emotional intelligence, and RQ gives us the opportunity to build our relationship intelligence. And I have to say, having been exposed to this work by our own um, Dr. Professor uh, Michael Patterson, who was a principal with Core Strengths that offers the RQ uh, tool as well as the deeper Uh, insights on uh, theory and practice that he's bringing to the institution. Um, I have to say all of my group work got exponentially better. I mean, my life is group work, KA, you know, I do project life for a living and I never know who I'm going to be working with or matter of fact, if we're going to have pins when we need pencils or what, you just show up and you make the best of the space. And so having increased relationship intelligence, understanding uh, what your motivational values are, even your conflict sequence, what, what triggers you? Are you triggered to um, focus on performance, uh, on people, on process? And when you're in conflict, is it the same sequence? And if not, how do you get back to normal? Um, so they have a series of 24 strengths to help you look at what are you pulling on when the waves come crashing in on the buoy? 
So we'd love for you to come and learn more about this with this center. Um, Dr. Patterson so graciously has offered to give us four sessions in this. Um, the certificate offering starts on the 27th of March. It runs on four consecutive Saturdays. There is a little bit of pre-work, so I urge you to grab this link that I just dropped in now if you're interested in learning more. Uh, we just did a, a International Women's Day special, so the price is discounted. So your participation here uh, allows you the space to, um, to join us. So looking forward to, to having you um, continue in the journey with us. That's the one of many uh, opportunities. And as Asia has already mentioned, we're encouraging registration for the rest of the month. And that special will be running uh, till the course starts at the end of March as well. And I guess the last thing here is for any questions about the center, I know that Dr. Gabby did share with us about our programs, um, you know, any offerings that we have, whether it's for your scholarship or for certificate programs or the speaker series and elevating your voice such as this, um, feel free to reach out to anyone on our team. Uh, for IWD, the st uh, strategy team, the host team, the moderation team, very glad to have these partners with us in the space to deliver each week. And what can I say about celebrating Christiana Badian? <laughs> One phone call away. Let me just say, don't ever burn a bridge because you never, never, never know when your paths might cross again and you'll come full circle to something that someone in your path gave you as a gracious gift. So Christiane, thank you for your feedback of yesterday. That continues to inform me now. Thank you so much, Kim. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Again, join us again on Wednesday in March, the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st. And with that said, um, Dr. Gabby, do you have any last things that you wanted to mention about the center? I don't have any last things, but I do want to thank everyone for being here. Um, Christiane, this is an amazing, amazing session. Um, more practical than theoretical, which is always good for us um, because we are scholar practitioners. So thank you. Um, and again, thanks to the team for being here, for being present, for participating and making this, these events happen. Um, have a wonderful evening. And again, if you have any questions about the center, about the work, if you're interested in participating or joining us in some way on this journey, feel free to reach out to one of us. Thank you and have a great time or evening or night, depending on where you're at. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Christiane, for coming today and, and being with us today. Of course. Thanks all. All right. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you.